All right. Okay, it's delivery day. Let's see. Let's check the update on the delivery and see. Okay, out for delivery. All right. So give it a couple hours and see how it goes. I'm going to be patient and not going to get too excited. So we, we will see. We will see when it gets here. Okay, so still says out for delivery. Oh man, um, is that, no, 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 that's not it. Just a car driving by. Um, oh, I know. Hey honey, can you make sure to check the door every so often if you hear any doorbell or knocking, can you make sure you check it? All right, thanks. All right, so let's check, I mean, Still shows out for delivery. Okay. Um, is that it? No. No, that's not it. Okay. Oh man, it's taking these guys so long. Honey, can you make sure to... Yeah, okay, cool. Thank you. Welcome back guys to another episode of Comics with Bonix. Today we're going to be unboxing a huge book. It's going to be one that I've been looking for for a long time. It's probably been at least six months that I've had this and been serious about this on my want list and we're going to be unboxing it today. So this is the package that came in today. I've been waiting all day for it. As you guys saw on the previous clips, I've been waiting all day for the delivery person to get here and it's finally here and we're going to be looking at it for the first time together so i'm super excited to get this unboxed so let's get into it So excited to have this book. I've been really hunting it down for a while. I had a budget in mind and it was kind of difficult to find it within my budget because I felt when you're looking in a low grade it's going to be a lot of competition. A lot of people were after it I'm sure but let's go ahead and take a look at what it is. Amazing Spider-Man number one. This is the very first issue in the Amazing Spider-Man title. And it's the first time the Fantastic Four is crossed over to another title. This is also the first appearance of J. Jonah Jameson and the Chameleon. Origin of the Spider-Man retold. It came out in March of 1963. And this is graded at a CGC 2.5 with off-white pages. Really gorgeous copy. Very nice colors. When I saw the pictures on this book, I didn't see a lot of flaws on the front cover. Usually when it's at a 2.5, there is a lot of 
color breaking creases or there can be chips missing from the front cover but this front cover looks very good and sometimes you also see that this copy has a lot of chipping along the edge so if you look on the edge here there is no chipping at all on this copy which is super awesome It also looks like this book has never been pressed or cleaned. I see a lot of pressable defects. If you guys see on this cover part right here, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but there is some bends and also non-color breaking defects that can be pressed out. So here is a look at the back cover. Some creases there. But again, no chunks missing. Still a very nice back cover. So I feel like this presents very well for its grade. It's very possible that this can get a, a grade bump. Not sure if I would ever crack this out. I I'm not sure if I would be willing to risk that on this book. I'm happy with the grade that it's in now. I do see that there are a couple things that the graders notes also mention. There is a couple of holes that go through the book, but they're very small, almost like pinholes, like very small holes right here. Barely see it, but that goes through a majority of the book. There is another one right here that goes through the majority of the book as well. Oh man, I am super happy to have picked this up. This is a huge day in my Spider-Man collecting. Um, I've been looking forward to picking up a copy for a long time now. And there was times when I felt like this copy was out of reach. Um, to get a well-presenting copy um, was getting very pricey and it just took a lot of patience and um, actually the perfect timing. Um, I saw this go on a claim sale and I was just, I happened to just browse social media and I saw that it went on a claim sale. The claim sale went for about two hours before they actually put this book up for sale. And I was worried that when you claim it, you're, you're going to fall behind when it comes to lag. So there might be other people that claim in front of you. But as soon as I saw it put up for sale, I put in the claim right away and I was able to win. And very cool experience. It was fun. It just took a lot of patience and took almost two hours waiting in the claim sale just to be able to claim this book. But I'm so happy I did it because this is gonna stay in my collection. I'm seriously going for all the Amazing Spider-Man books from one through 20. That's my goal this year, is to go through one through 20. Picked up the majority of the books and this is a huge piece that was missing and I'm glad I was able to get it. So I also wanted to talk about a couple things as well. It was uh, brought up to me in a discussion what collectors consider to be their goal in the end game. So a lot of collectors, they plan to pass off books to their kids, or they also plan to sell toward the end to fund another investment. To me, a lot of my books are for investment. I look forward to holding on to them for as long as I can before ultimately selling them towards the end. Hopefully one day my kids will look at my collection and will want to have me pass it down to them so that they can enjoy it and treasure the collection as well. But if they don't have any interest in the collection, I do plan to sell them in 10 years, 15 years, and ultimately invest in something else. That's my goal at the end game. I'm not sure what the investment will be could be a variety of things. I'm just not sure what that investment will be yet, but that's one of the things I plan to do with my books. 
if I do keep some of the books, there might be just a few that I would keep in my collection. But as far as the rest, I would consider selling them in about 10 to 15 years to be able to put those funds towards another investment. So that's one of the conversations that I've had with another collector. And I know some collectors have kind of thought about this, but not sure what they'll end up doing. A lot of times I would bring the, the conversation up with my family and they really don't have any interest in me passing the collection to them. So I think one of the best things to do would be for me to consider selling them in about that time frame. So just something else that I thought I'd bring up in this video. So maybe you can comment in this video what your end game would be with your collection. So one more time, just wanted to show the Amazing Spider-Man number one, very second appearance of the Amazing Spider-Man and Peter Parker and the first issue in his solo ongoing series. One thing I did want to note before I let you guys go, something interesting was in the past, I've seen that this book noted by CGC would show that it was a Stanley story and Steve Ditko's cover and art. With this book, it actually says that it's a Stanley story, Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko cover, which Jack Kirby's name was never on the notes of this CGC slab in the past. So I thought that was cool that CGC did give credit to Jack Kirby for this cover. Um, I had to look it up in multiple sources, but it looks like Jack Kirby did have a hand in creating the art for this cover. So it's pretty cool that Jack Kirby got credit as well as Steve Ditko on Amazing Spider-Man number one. So just wanted to leave you with that little tidbit. So that was my unboxing, guys. It was a huge one. Thank you for joining me on this awesome video. And I want to thank you for joining me here on Comics with Bonix. And I want to remind you, as always, to collect your passion. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.